Astronaut Nicolina Elric, welcome to GSTC here in Singapore, or even though you're a resident, but Thank very you. much welcome to Australia in Space TV. Thank you. Well, I'm grateful to be here. Thanks, Chris. Now, you've been referred uh, to this particular interview via Axiom Space, so we will give them some recognition. Absolutely. Give them a shout out. Uh, but you're a sort of private commercial uh, astronaut or self funded, which is a fascinating, you know, well done uh, instead of getting there Thank in you. the first place. So I don't even know where to start. Maybe start with your uh, most recent mission. Okay. And then we'll talk about uh, your upcoming okay. launch. So I flew in Blue Origin and S26. It was the eighth human flight that went to space with Blue Origin. Um, we flew in August 29th, 2024. So I've still got some sparkle space dust on me. Right. Um, and I'm still feeling the integration of coming back from space. So every time an astronaut goes to space, you come back, you're definitely shifted. Yeah. And there's a long period of integration thereafter. And it's just been amazing. So yeah, I feel like a little bit of a space ambassador since. No one's technically paying me for that, but it's just, yeah, I, I can't talk highly enough that everybody should have that experience. And maybe just talk us through the mission. What, what did it involve and maybe even the lead up, the, the sort of the preparation? Okay. So, I mean, I've been in the space industry for more than 20 years now. So I had the fortune opportunity to, I fly helicopters privately as a hobby. Okay. And so because of that, I met some military people who then introduced me to some people who worked in space agencies and they said, maybe you should consider this line of work. Um, so it became a passion hobby for me. So I ended up training with some astronauts in the States. Um, so some really great NASA astronauts gave me some good tips of advice and I worked out with them. And then I got to just some people at European Space Agency who then introduced me to some cosmonauts. So I did some training in Russia. Um, so I was more than overqualified to wow. do a private uh, mission for the one day that we do with Blue Origin. I mean, it's literally 10 minutes and 10 seconds for <laughs> in space, but it definitely felt a lot longer. Yep. Uh, the overview effect, uh, all oh, that yeah. kind of thing. So, um, shout out to Dr. Frank White who coined that expression. I mean, a great guy. I speak to him quite a lot. He's just amazing. Uh, it really is overview effect. So when you get into space and you look at the window, for me it was more about looking towards space than looking down on the planet. When you look yeah. at the planet and you see the fragility of it, your heart breaks. You just, I just felt so overwhelmed with compassion and awe of like, oh my God, I have to help her. Like I felt like that's Mother Earth, we gotta do something here. But at the same time, I was looking at the vastness of space thinking, oh, this is just so overwhelmingly deep and vast and just phenomenal. And it yep. was sparkly and, you know, typical girl. I like things that are sparkly. <laughs> so I was like, I just want to swim in it. I just want to be part of it. And I was so exhilarated by it that I just thought there's something here that I need to tap into. The other one is you, you mentioned you've been in the sort of investing in the space sector as well for yes. a while. Yep. How much more did you learn? Uh, sort of brought it all home a little bit? Well, it did. That was the great thing about it. So for me, I initially made my money through IT investments in the 90s and early 2000s. And then after that, you know, I kind of did a little bit of real estate and then I started doing space tech investment. So I thought space industry was a super sexy thing 20 years ago and no one else did. Everybody thought I was batshit crazy, if I don't know if I could say that, <laughs> but uh, my friends thought I was completely nuts. And now everybody's calling me saying, how do we get involved? This is definitely the thing. Yeah. So when I went to space, it was always my game plan to do it. And so when I finally did it, I kind of realized I was on the right trajectory. What were some of those early investments? What, what were you seeing early? Uh, well, we satellite systems, yeah. uh, asteroid mining. Okay. Yeah. So we're kind of looking at infrastructure for long term. So yeah. like the moon and Mars projects is uh, definitely the big thing that we're looking at. We think that's going to be, it's going to happen within my lifetime for sure. And some of the, you're still obviously doing that work now. Yeah. What would be some of your uh, sort of peaks? We've just had Rohit from the, from the panel session. Uh, as well, so you still see uh, oh, yeah, opportunity, but sure. yeah, anything that uh, sort of spots your eye right now in terms of some well, trends. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned about the laser technology. I yeah. mean, that seems to be a buzzword at the moment. I think the infrastructure of not of telecommunications in space. I think that's going to be the key element. Yeah. I feel that uh, people are worried about uh, cybersecurity on it. If it's going to be infiltrated. So listening to your panel that you were hosting earlier yeah. it was amazing to get more insight into that. Right. Now your next mission, uh, 2027? Yeah. So initially I was in discussion. I can't really say who with because I have haven't signed the project yet. <laughs> um, initially I was in discussion with someone and they said 2026. Um, I don't feel I'm going to be ready for that. There's a lot more other things I want to do. So I'm looking more at 2027. Um, ideally I'm discussing a possibility of a spacewalk because um, ah, right, I think okay. that would be really exciting. If not, I may go to one of the new space stations that will be up in the air by then. Yep. So we're in discussions about that. But yeah, for sure. I mean, minimal one week in orbit. That's what I would So think. obviously the one mission is not enough? Yes. And you feel you want oh, to keep yeah. doing it? It's like, it's, oh, it's just so empowering. I just have to go back. One other 
question just on these missions do you find that you want to link it to some research yeah. or is it more of a so personal experience I, well that was it so the problem with me not signing a contract with a lot of these other companies are they work hand in hand with big pharma which i understand that's where the money is yeah i'm anti big pharma so i previously had cancer and i went through all that i think being a high achiever that I am and highly stressed, it was inevitable that something like that would knock me for six. And I learned a lot about uh, all the pharmaceutical companies during that time, which I did not like. And so it just left a really bad taste with me. So I'm anti big pharma, so yeah. I'm not bringing any of that. So what I am doing is a whole naturopathic way in space. So we're talking about stem yeah. cells, generative energy, like trying to do stuff that's all to do with healing, mental health, all those things are the forefront of my mission and goal. Uh, lastly, you mentioned that you were, uh, because you're here in Singapore, I am. Scottish, slight Scottish accent, you might be just yeah. losing a little bit, but you flew under the Singaporean flag? I yeah. did. So I am the first Scottish woman to go to space, and then Great. because I've been a resident of Singapore for 30 years, I brought the Singapore flag up and I represented Singapore in space <laughs> for the very first time. Beautiful. Which I'm not the demographic being a white girl, but um, yeah, it was pretty interesting stuff. And it was good because it kind of bridged that gap to people to make them realize that you know, Caucasians live here too, and English is a yeah. language here that we all speak, and I think that was the greatest joy as well. Like, talking to people about Singapore and telling them that, like, you know, this is such an amazing country. There's, like, so many opportunities here. Very good. It's uh, interesting to talk to a Singaporean with a slightly Scottish accent, <laughs> uh, but also a very, as you mentioned, high achiever and who's self-funding herself to go to space. I think it's quite inspirational. Thank you. Uh, and I will thank again Axiom Space for, for that okay. lead. Uh, but Nicola Elric, uh, Nicolina, I beg your pardon, uh, Elric, Thank you so much for joining us today on. on Australia and Space TV Thank and enjoy you. the rest of GSTC. Thank you, I will. Thank you very much.